Common conditions causing low back pain. 90% of patients with low back pain get better within one month. A combination of time and short period of rest with non steroidal anti-inflammatory medications usually improves the patient's condition. What are the risk factors for low back pain? Usually it has to do with the job. Job dissatisfaction, twisting, excessive continuous vibration at the job, heavy lifting, stress on the back or stress and depression. The typical profile is an adult male with low income that smokes cigarette. Cigarette smoke is bad for the vascularity and the nutrition of the disc. Here is a chart that shows the intradiscal pressure and how that pressure changes with the position of the spine. So if you are supine, the intradiscal pressure is low. But if you are sitting on a chair and leaning forward and lifting weight, then the interdiscal pressure is the highest in this position. How about Waddell signs? Waddell signs are controversial, and the presence of multiple Waddell signs on examination of the patient indicates a non-organic symptom etiology. Some of these signs are like overreaction, exaggeration, or tenderness to light touch. And if you distract the patient, the patient will give you a different response. Or the patient will give pain response in non-anatomic distribution. We do not want to be judgmental or accusatory. How about history and examination of the patient? If the patient is worse with flexion, like in sitting, then it is a disc problem. So if the pain goes to the leg, then it is a disc herniation. If the back pain is more, then this is a discogenic back pain. If the patient is worse with extension and there is more back pain, then it is spondylosis or spondylolithiasis. But if the patient is worse with extension and there is more leg pain than back pain, it's probably spinal stenosis. How about other movement of the spine, like a straight leg raise? The patient will be supine and you're going to keep the knee extended and you're going to flex the hip. It stretches the sciatic nerve, and if the patient had pain between 35 to 70 degrees, then there is an irritation of the nerve roots, and usually it's L5, S1 nerve roots that's irritated. The contralateral straight leg raise. A positive contralateral straight leg raise is very specific for lumbar disc herniation. A positive straight leg raising could mean nerve root irritation by the herniated disc. For surgery to be successful, you need to have all these three findings together. Positive straight leg raise, positive disc herniation on imaging study, and neurological findings. If you have all these three, then there's 95% the patient have a disc herniation. If you have the straight leg raise and the imaging, then it's about 85%. A positive straight leg raise alone could mean the patient has a 66% chance of having a herniated disc. How about imaging? Usually you start with x-rays. The MRI will show abnormal disc in about one third of asymptomatic people that are younger than four years old. 
There will be false positive MRI findings in 90% of the patients that are older than 60 years old. You will find abnormal MRI findings in normal people. Indication for an MRI. When do you get an MRI? Pain that lasts more than four weeks and the patient is not getting better. If you suspect coda equina syndrome, infection, tumor, or trauma. A patient with ankylosing spondylitis or a dish, even with minor trauma. MRI with gadolinium differentiates recurrent disc herniation from fibrosis. Fibrosis enhances with gadolinium. Recurrent disc herniation does not enhance with gadolinium. These are the most common causes of low back pain. Intervertebral disc disorders. It can be a herniated disc or it can be internal disc disruption called the equina syndrome or degenerative disc disease. It can be lumbar stenosis, spondylolithesis, degenerative scoliosis, failed back syndrome, or sacroiliac joint dysfunction. So when we talk about herniated disc, we're talking about back pain and leg pain, radicular pain. L4, L5, and L5S1 are the most common levels affected by disc herniation. The usual location of the disc herniation is posterolateral. It's a common location for the disc to herniate posterolaterally. So let's assume it's L4, L5 disc herniation. That posterolateral disc herniation will affect the traversing nerve root. So it will get the L5 nerve root. But if it is a far lateral disc herniation or a foraminal disc herniation, it will affect the exiting nerve root. So it will affect the L4 nerve root in 5 to 10% of the cases. Exiting nerve root means the upper nerve root. When you do a straight leg raising, it will be positive, and that's called the tension sign. Types of disc herniation varies from protrusion or bulge to a herniation to a sequestered disc. The manifestations of L4, L5, and S1 nerve root irritation. This is the most common findings of L4 nerve root irritation. This is the most common findings of L5 nerve root irritation. And this is the most common findings of S1 nerve root irritation. Coda equina syndrome. Central disc herniation affect multiple nerve roots that control the bladder and the bowel. The patient will complain of back pain more than radicular pain and will also complain of bladder and bowel symptoms, frequency, incontinence, and the sensation over the perianal area is affected. Early diagnosis with an MRI and early surgery is important. The internal disc disruption is called discogenic back pain. Early disc degeneration can occur due to annular tears. The patient usually have back pain and no leg pain, and the pain will be worsened with flexion and sitting. Degenerative disc disease, there will be loss of the disc height, and L4, L5 level is significant. Lumbar stenosis is narrowing and degeneration of the spinal canal. There are two types, 
central type and the lateral type. In the central type, the pain worsens with extension. The patient may have neurogenic claudication and rule out vascular problems. Examine the pulses. Sitting and flexion of the spine will relieve the pain. Grocery cart sign because it increases the spinal canal size. There is cramps and heaviness of the calves. The pain starts proximally and goes distally. In lateral stenosis, you will get radicular symptoms. How about spondylolisthesis? If there is a bony defect in the pars, that's called spondylolysis. If you see a slippage of the vertebra due to a defect in the pars, that's called spondylolisthesis. The slippage of the vertebrae could compress the nerves and narrow the spinal canal. It can occur in younger age groups from repeated activities such as gymnastics. There will be pain with extension of the spine and it may progress with time. There are multiple types, but one of them is the ethnic type, which is more in males. L5-S1 usually involved, and it will involve the L5 nerve root with hamstring spasticity. In the degenerative type, it's more in females. It usually affects the L4, L5 level. The slippage is not severe. The pars remain intact, and this condition is common in middle-aged females. The ethnic type, there are pars defect. You got a stocky dog sign, which the defect is seen in oblique x-rays. Degenerative scoliosis. There is degenerative changes in the spinal disc and the facet joints causing the spine to curve. It may cause low back pain. Failed back syndrome. Chronic back and possible leg pain that is experienced by the patient after a spine surgery. It could be due to non-mechanical causes such as psychological factors, postoperative infection, or adhesions and epidural fibrosis. It may also be due to mechanical causes, such as inadequate surgery, recurrent disc herniation, failure of fusion and or fixation, and may be due to instability of the spine. For example, if the surgeon removes one facet on one side or 50% partial facet removal, but it is done on both sides. That may cause iatrogenic spondylolithesis. Sacroiliac joint dysfunction is an occult cause of low back pain. Pain is in the lower back region, usually to the sides. The Faber test is helpful in determining the presence of SI joint problems. The best method for diagnosing the presence of SI joint problems is by administering an injection into the SI joint to localize the source of the pain. And this step is extremely important if you're going to decide to do surgery for fusion of the sacroiliac joint. In addition to all these factors, look for osteoporotic compression spine fractures in the elderly and rule out multiple myeloma or metastatic tumors. Try to rule out other conditions such as hip conditions when you're dealing with spine condition. Be aware that hip conditions and the spine conditions may affect each other, not only in the management, but also can confuse the diagnosis. Also try to differentiate 
sciatica that's caused by a disc herniation from sciatica that's caused by piriformis syndrome. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.